we all need help sometimes. Uh, some of us are, if you're like me, sometimes a little too proud to ask for help when you should ask for help. And sometimes the help you ask for is absolutely expert help, and sometimes the help is, uh, well, it's there, and that's about it. And Jesus said he was going to send a helper for us, and uh, you and I don't have to ask for the helper, so it's not a matter of pride, and he's absolutely expert help. He's never just there. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher. We have been looking at the work of regeneration. We've been looking, we've looked at the Son and the Father. Now we're going to be moving into looking at our relationship to the Holy Spirit. He's actually the one that causes the regeneration in Titus uh, chapter 3, verse 5. He's responsible for it as well as be, being uh, responsible for the birth according to uh, John chapter 3, verse 5. And so we come over here to the Gospel of John chapter 14, and verse 16. Now this is the first time that this promise is made, although John does not record this promise until probably 90 to 95 AD. So 60 to 65 years after this event actually had taken place. Jesus is in the upper room. He's speaking with just the 11 disciples. Judas has left. So he's only speaking to those who have, have believed in him. And he tells him, I will ask the Father. I will ask the Father. Uh, just as an interesting side note, the word for ask here, eritao, as compared to uh, a couple of the other words for ask, such as iteo uh, and, and adeo, this word, um, or deomai, excuse me, this word has the idea of to ask as an equal, to actually ask between equals. And so he says, I'm going to make this request. I can treat he and the Father as equals. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Now, we probably been over this and hopefully you've heard this taught uh, if not here someplace else that this word for another here uh, alas or alan in this case because it's uh, parakleton is is uh, is the form that we have here from parakletos it's an accusative form that means it's the object of the sentence so I'm going to ask the father that he give you give you what uh, a parakletos here in this case parakleton and this word another means one that is of the same kind. In other words, the same kind that I am, Jesus is saying. He says, the same kind that I have been to you, I'm asking the Father to send this other helper. I do like the New American Standard use of, of this. Um, the word, the verb par kaleo, to call in alongside, to uh, encourage, uh, to help, when we're, there's a variety of different ways that this, this word can be uh, translated, but I like this idea of helper. Uh, some of your older translations translated it comforter, um, but I, I like this idea of a helper, but he's not helping us as though he's just kind of there to give us some assistance. He's actually there to do what you and I cannot do. Same way that Jesus for the disciple, disciples was not simply there to do some help when they kind of when things were tough he was there to do what they could not do there were things he could not he could calm the sea they could not he could make the boat arrive at the shore immediately they could not he could feed 5,000 they could not he healed the dead or healed the sick and raised the dead and yes they did works of healing but uh, not as he did where he did it all day long he's a creator He's God, absolutely, has always been God, and will always be God. And so he says, I'm asking for another one. Now, he knows who this is. He says that he might abide with you into the age. His word forever is literally aiston iona, into the age. So he's going to remain with us into this age. As this age goes on, he'll be there until the, this age is completed. Uh, there'll be a time in the future in which... Um, just, a, just a moment. This light has really gotten bright all of a sudden. The sun came out from behind a cloud. There we go. My, it's still kind of bright. Anyway, um, 
But he says, this, the, the spirit, he says, is going to stay with you forever. And then he tells us in verse 17 who this is. And I just, I just mentioned it, but verse 17, that is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, cannot take. They don't do this because it does not see him. The world has to see stuff. And this isn't just glance at. This is actually be able to see with, with some real clarity because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you. He abides with you. And I want to pull this up over here on the side. Here's our verb, verb meno. He, he abides or he's, he's comfortable around you guys right now. And this with you is the Greek preposition para, a parallel to you, or alongside of you in the sense that he's around you in, in, in the presence that he was. Because he was present in the person of God the Son and he was okay there in this as they walked about. And he will be, now he's looking to a, a future tense here, he will be in you. This is a really important distinction that many Christians do not understand. Believers in the Old Testament did not receive the Spirit in the way that you and I receive the Spirit. We receive the Spirit uh, as New Testament believers in a whole new sense that he actually is in us. He abides or dwells in us. He's not just alongside us. He's not in our presence. We have a whole new kind of relationship. But this shouldn't surprise us because we've seen that we have a whole new kind of relationship to the Son and a whole new kind of relationship to the Father that Old Testament believers did not have. Old Testament believers did not have eternal life. They were waiting. They were promised that they would get it in their resurrection. Jesus promised us we can actually have it now while we're still breathing the air. It's a difference between something that was then and something that is now. And likewise, the Holy Spirit is unique uh, relationship to us compared to the Old Testament because that was a relationship in which he was present among people. He was given upon certain individuals to carry out works, but he wasn't indwelling uh, individuals, number one. And number two, not every person that was a believer received the Spirit. Some of them received him simply because God gave him to accomplish a task. And sometimes when that task was over, the Spirit departed. There was no, it wasn't a salvation relationship that the Spirit was, was involved in. And I think that's very important for us to make that distinction. That you and I have a whole new relationship to this one that is another one, like Christ. But he's in us today. Not just with us. Not just alongside us. He's in us. And I trust that's something that encourages you as we move forward and looking at our relationship to the Holy Spirit to stop and think about the fact that the Holy Spirit is in each and every one of us. And we've got a number of other verses that we want to look at about him being in us. And we will eventually come to those. But we're going to continue on in our looking here in John for a little bit more about this idea of what he's doing as a comforter. And so I trust that you'll stick with me as we look at these. And I trust as you understand more about your relationship to all three persons of the Godhead, and now in particular the Holy Spirit, that it'll be one of those things that'll encourage you in having a good day. And uh, the best place to have a good day is to set your mind on who you are in Christ and have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.